Hey guys, what's going on? Alan here, and you're watching the Gibson Garage YouTube channel. Did not come with the Thanks for tuning in, I appreciate that. And please like and subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, do that. Please, very much. Um, today we're going to be diagnosing some blue smoke that's been coming out the tailpipe. Now, there's a couple things to look for. Are we talking about, you know, a puff of blue smoke when you just first started up? Or are we talking about, you know, smoking like a train when you're going down the road? It'd be two totally different problems. In this case, it's just a, a it's a light bluish, know, whatever, blue puff of smoke. Just when she starts it up, I haven't done this personally, but she said she had her uh, dad or her mom following her, and it, it clears up right away, and it doesn't smoke while going down the road. Just when you start it up. So I can already tell you, it's probably bad valve seats in the cylinder head. Little rubber seals that go around the valves as you know they're going up and down really fast and oil sloshing up above them a whole bunch but you don't want that oil to drain down you, the stem of the seat and into your combustion chamber and that's what happens when those seats go bad or those seals valve seat whatever a uh, seal valve stem seal not seats i've been saying seats valve stem seals in the cylinder head dry out go bad change oil enough i don't know there could be a lot of reasons who knows um, but yeah, that's probably, there he is, you son of a biscuit. Get over here, you turkey. Howdy. Come on. Come here. Come here, hey. Look in the house. Get some water. Yeah, so anyway, probably dried valve seats. Uh, seals, dang it. Probably dried valve seals, valve stem seals. Uh, if you got smoke while you're rolling down the road, then you've probably got fried piston rings or a blown head gasket. But that's what the leak down test is for. You can rule out the head gasket with that. So what you need to do is, it's very important to get whatever cylinder you're gonna be plugged into, uh, you gotta get that cylinder on its compression stroke. It's gotta be sealed up for this to work right. And what you're gonna do is take a, um, is it a compression tester? You take just the hose of a compression tester and you take the little valve, like a little tire valve that you see inside of an inner tube and you screw in the hose with no gauge on it and then you can plug in, usually you can plug in your air compressor. That's what the point is. You need to find some way to screw in where the spark plug goes with your air compressor. Then you get that cylinder on its compression stroke so both the valves are closed, or all the valves are closed, however many valves it has in that cylinder. Then you let the air rip. And if you've got a bad head gasket, and that head gasket is like an oil gallery, then you'll hear air in here and hear, hear a hissing in here. If it's a blown head gasket in your coolant passage, uh, which this has full coolant, then you'll hear bubbling or hissing in here. Uh, either way, if you hear the hissing here, it's definitely probably a blown head gasket or a crack, God forbid. If you hear it in there, then it could be the rings. You're always gonna hear something in here. As a matter of fact, because the rings don't seal 100%, you're probably gonna hear a little something through there, just uh, air blown by the rings. But that's where the compression test comes in. You do a compression test on all the cylinders and make sure that's up to snuff. Then you know what you're hearing through here you compare it to the other cylinders. If you're hearing the same kind of sound in here as all the other cylinders, and that's just blow bypass the rings. Nothing you can do about it. 
you can rebuild the engine but i mean i just keep adding oil it's a free car and the same thing with the seals you know she wants to they end up wanting to rebuild the top end i'll do it for them but i would just say is if it passes compression and leak down then you just got bad seals on the valves or bad rings on the pistons either case just keep topping it off with oil until you're ready to throw a lot of money at it because that is going to be expensive 10 mil here and here oh sweet this car has a tool tray stay in these are all busted none of these have clips at work some new spark plugs all right I've got that hooked up and I pulled out a, two EFI fuses that were sitting right here 10 and a 15 so hopefully that won't send any fuel in there wash the cylinders out but yeah I'm gonna hold the throttle open and give it a crank hopefully the camera doesn't fall over In the 125, 130, 135, 140, 140. Let's try it again. Let's go for like five or six cranks. So we're still at 140 ish, a little over that time. Right, let's check the next one. All right, so the compression tests look good. They were all at about 140 to 142, 143 in between there. When we do the leak down test later, next actually, when we hear the same amount of hissing in all four cylinders, we'll know it's normal amount of hissing. If we do that and in one of these, seems like it has a lot more hissing than the other three, then we might have a blown head gasket. Okay, so, so far, I've checked compression, or uh, did a leak test in the first two cylinders. I've got my son in the car, cranking over. And uh, because we don't have any cooling issues, like overheating issues, we're not losing coolant, we're not gonna be listening for sounds out of the radiator. Um, it's open, just in case we hear something. But because it's an oil issue, we're losing oil out of the tailpipe uh, on startup, we're gonna be listening for excess leaks in here uh, if there's a blown head gasket that's where the air is going to escape into uh, a blown head gasket in the way of leaking oil there can be a blown head gasket in the way of leaking coolant but that's not our issue all right so go ahead and bump it aj 
right there the needle moved right away we're going in left to right i don't know if that's just coincidence or what but nonetheless i don't know the firing order of this thing so we got you only want to put like 40 to 60 psi on this gun not like 128 that would be a little too much uh, so when i hook this up we're gonna hopefully we don't hear any bubbling out of the radiator and hopefully we don't hear any excess noise out of here we might hear something if we get close enough but that would be normal blow by past the rings what we're looking for is all four sound the same out of here And because it's just a puff of smoke on startup, it's most likely valve seals. Uh, so hook this back up and wait for the needle to move. Just start to move. Go ahead. Go. Go. There it is. That's better. Okay. Because it's still very compressed when I pulled the gun away a lot came back out of this hole. So I know we're compressing enough to get a leak out of here if there was one. Compression test is good. Uh, I don't think this is technically a leak down test. Uh, it might be more of a pressure test. I think a leak down test is when you hook up the suction cup to the, or you know, the gauge to the um, radiator and see if that holds a vacuum. So I'm going to button this thing up. I'm going to put the plugs and coils back on it and the engine cover back on it. And I'll set the camera up by the tailpipe so we can get a, maybe hopefully get a shot of that puff of smoke. Valve seats, seals, valve stem seals. God. Well, guys, that's gonna do it. I appreciate you hanging in there and to see what uh, the outcome of this thing was. Why don't you guys let me know if you've ever done anything like this and uh, on what kind of car, what your outcome was. You know, tell me your story if you got any stories. And uh, also, tell me if I was right about what exactly a leak down test is and what I did exactly. And if you would have done anything different, it's all good. Put it in the comments. We're all here about learning, so just, you know, don't be rude. Don't be rude, be cool. That's gonna do it, guys. Thanks for watching.